Hello and welcome to this video on the Ronskian and general solutions. So in this video I'm going to um, define the Ronskian and explain how it's useful for determining when you have found a general solution. So let me start uh, by just defining what a general solution is and then we can define the Ronskian and an example that we'll see that will lead us to the connection between these two questions. Okay so a general solution to an ODE is a solution that contains arbitrary constants and um, and these uh, constants can be chosen so that any initial condition can be solved as long as there is a solution to that initial condition so in other words a general solution covers all possible solutions to an ODE and those uh, arbitrary constants are the key uh, method which covers all of them, right? You choose different C values, you get all sorts of different solutions. Okay, so the definition of the Ronskian for um, for two functions, and this can be generalized to more, and I'll show you how that generalizes in just a second. So we write down the Ronskian like this, and the reason we have this kind of strange notation for the Ronskian is that it's a reminder that you plug in a Y1 and a Y2 into the Ronskian, and out comes a function of t, w of t, and that kind of square bracket in there is just a reminder. This is what I plugged in to get the uh, Ronskian of y1 and y2. Okay, so the Ronskian is defined as y1 of t times y2 prime of t minus y1 prime of t times y2 of t. Now if you notice this looks kind of similar in form to a determinant, um, that's a, a kind of critical observation. So you can also write the Ronskian down as the determinant of the matrix formed as follows. Y1 of t and Y2 of t go into the first row, and Y1 prime of t and Y2 prime of t go into the second row. Now if you want to generalize the idea of a Ronskian beyond the two functions, you can add in more functions out this way, y3, y4, and so on, and for every function you add off that direction you have to take an extra derivative going down here, and you can talk about the determinant of that matrix and Ronskian, and you will have a similar phenomenon to what I'm going to describe here for second order differential equations, but that will be a useful tool for higher order differential equations. Okay, so now that we have a Ronskian defined, let's see how this Ronskian comes up in the question of whether we have a general solution. So I have made a claim here that the general solution to the equation t squared y double prime plus t y prime minus 4y equals 0 is the function y of t equal c1 t squared plus c2 t to the minus 2. So for that, um, to test whether this is a general solution, it, what we need to do is we need to see if we can always solve initial conditions. So I should include here also initial conditions. So I'm going to say that y1, uh, one, well let's say no, so y of t0 is specified, it's going to be equal to v0, and y of t0, y prime of t0 is going to be equal to v naught. Okay, so if we choose an initial time and an initial y value and an initial y prime value, then this should, oops, see, this should be, this should give us a good test of whether we have a general solution or not. Can we solve any initial condition of this form? So the first step then is to plug this in. So we plug in t naught into y and we get c1 t naught squared plus c2 t naught to the minus 2 and that has to be equal to y naught and then we have y prime of t naught is going to be c1 uh, now first let's take the derivative so we have a 2 coming down in front times c1 t naught and now we have a minus 2 coming down in front times c2 t naught to the minus 3 and that has to be equal to v naught. So you can see here we have a system of two equations. We're trying to figure out if we can always choose arbitrary constants c1 and c2 to solve any initial condition. So t0, y0, and v0, we have to allow those to take on any value. Can we now find a c1 and c2? And you'll notice that if you think of t naught squared here, for example, and t naught to the minus 2 here just as numbers, even though we don't know what those numbers are, we can form a matrix problem equivalent to this. 
and that would be a matrix multiplied by the vector c1, c2 of unknown coefficients. And on the right-hand side, we have a y naught and a v naught, And the matrix is going to be t naught squared, t naught to the minus 2, 2 t naught, and minus 2 t naught to the minus 3. So we're asking the question, can we always solve this matrix equation for c1, c2? Now the answer to that question depends on the structure of the matrix. If this matrix is invertible, then we can invert it and find C1 and C2. If it's not invertible, then there will be some y naught v naught values for which we have an infinite number of C1 and C2s. But then for other y naught and v naught values, we will be unable to find a solution at all. So just to remember, to remind you what that, that looks like, if you make the augmented matrix T naught squared, T naught to the minus 2, 2 T naught minus. 2 t naught to the minus 3, and then v, oh, sorry, y0, v0, and you row reduce that. There's two possibilities depending on the values of y0 and v0. You might end up with a row reduced matrix that looks like this if it's not invertible, and there's like a number here, let's say, I don't know, 7, and a number here, 4. This is impossible to solve because it would be 0 equal 4. But if we had a zero here by coincidence, and that's not guaranteed, that's only for specific values of y naught and v naught that that would work, then we would have an infinite number of solutions. So as long as our matrix is not invertible, in other words, if it row reduces uh, to something with a, a zero row, then we do not have a solution to all initial conditions. And if it is invertible, then we do have a solution for all initial conditions. So uh, then we can just use the condition that the determinant being zero or non-zero will tell us about invertibility. So that's going to be determinant of this here is going to be minus 2 t naught to the minus 1 coming from the product across here minus and now the product across here so that's 2 t naught to the minus 1. So that's minus 4 t naught to the minus 1. So what we see is that the Ronskian, in which this is the Ronskian in here, because you'll notice uh, what I've got inside there is y1 of t naught, y2 of t naught, y1 prime of t naught, and y2 prime of t naught. And we found that the Ronskian is equal to minus 4 t naught to the minus 1. Now that is definitely non-zero. There is a small problem, and that is that it's undefined when t naught is equal to 0. Now the reason that happened is that the original equation has some constraints on it. If I plug in 0, if I plug in 0 for t here, here, what I'm left with is y has to be 0. So the only initial condition um, y of 0 equal, I can only have 0 on this side. And that's why there's constraints on what initial conditions will actually have a solution for this equation. But if I'm you trying to solve one of these initial conditions that does have a solution, these two functions will be enough for me to manage it. Okay, so, so now that we've discovered that this determinant not equal to zero is what guarantees that I'll be able to find a solution to my initial value problem. We can state what the Ronskian does for us. So if the Ronskian is non zero for all t naught, let's see here, so for all t naught, and you'll notice the v naught and the y naught don't actually matter because they're on the right hand side, they just get multiplied by this matrix, so all we need to do is in, we have to be able to invert this matrix which just depends on t naught. So if the Ronskian is non-zero for all t naught, then y1 of t and y2 of t allow us to form 
a general solution. So that is how we use the Ronskian to determine if we have found a general solution.